Hello, hello, my name is Benita, and I wanna share with you some realistic steps on how to emerge from depression, amen? I did put these steps on our page, our Unshackled from Depression Facebook page, but I wanted to come on and to do a video so that if you need to go up to our YouTube channel that you'll always have these um, chronicled and you'll be able to go to them, amen? So let's look at our steps. Our first step to come out of depression is to decide that you want to emerge. Um, when we first are depressed, it is an attack. We have been under an attack of the enemy. The enemy attacks our soul, which is our mind, our will, and our emotions. And really during that time period, um, we have to choose if we're going to agree with what the enemy is suggesting. Once we agree with what the enemy is suggesting, which may not, we may not really be very conscious of the fact that we've done it. We sometimes can develop or create what we call a soul tie with the gloom. And so that's when we begin to spiral down into more and more negativity. Well, what will happen is when we begin to not want to be there anymore, um, the spirit of God will lead us to a place um, where we will kind of come to ourselves like, wait a minute, what is this? I want to come out of this. And so what happens is that we emerge from or we we um, begin to emerge from depression, but we move from being attacked to being in battle. Amen. Because what you have to realize is that the enemy has had access to our soul area and he has um, encroached upon our soul area and we have to literally repossess that area. Amen. The area that we allowed him to have access to, he has um, developed negative habits that we have where we just automatically accept what is being said to us. Our perspective has been um, perverted. And so we have to now begin to fight. Amen. So you have to decide that you want to emerge. Nobody can do that for you. Um, no matter if your family members want you to come out of depression or not, we have to make that decision that I want out. It requires our will. Number two, we have to acknowledge again, as I said, that we go from being attacked by the enemy to being in a warfare with him when we are emerging from depression. You are in a warfare. Many of you have already gone through the attack part and now you're trying to come out. And that's a part of your being um, on this Facebook page and in this group is because you want to come out. Some people are struggling um, in reference to if they want to come out or not. Um, because they have created a soul tie with it because it seems justified to them that they are depressed. But as you stay on this page, as God will begin to minister to you through the teachings, through the songs, through the poetry, you are going to come to a place, a turnaround place where you're going to decide, you know what? I don't want to be depressed. And so you need steps, you need some direction and strategies in order for you to come out of it. And you must know that you have to prepare for a battle. Um, you have to ask the Spirit of God to be your partner and to reveal His plan to bring you out. That's number three. Now, everyone has their own individual journey out of depression. The Holy Spirit will begin to maneuver you through your plan. Amen. But your plan may look different from my plan. My plan may look different from the next person's plan. But when we partner with the Holy Spirit, when we say, Holy Spirit, I invite you to lead me out of depression. I need your help. I need your strength. I need your love. I need your wisdom. I need your, your um, ability to um, uh, maneuver me in places. Open my ears so that I can hear certain things. Open my spiritual eyes so that I can see. Um, I need you. 
Once you do that, then you um, can stand assured that the Spirit of God, who is a permanent resident on the inside of you, is working on your behalf to begin to take you out of this place of gloom. But you also need to, number four, choose to be patient with yourself, realizing that it took time for you to get to the emotional state that you were in, and it's going to take time to emerge from where you are. It's kind of like if you have been in, have an infection. Well, if you have an infection, one person might need a small amount of ampicillin. Another person may need a, need a larger dosage. Another person may need to be fed their um, antibiotic intravenously. So everybody is at a different state and stage and only the Holy Spirit knows um, where you are. And it's going to take time. It takes time to come out of depression. God is not going to zap you out of depression. God will help you by his spirit, but we ultimately have been given the authority over our soul. Remember, we are tripart. We are a human spirit with a soul housed in a body. And God has given us the responsibility and stewardship over our soul, over our body. It's our responsibility, just like we choose to take vitamins or choose to eat correctly or choose to go and, um, and exercise because we're taking care of our body. Well, God has given us authority to take care of our soul. Amen. So that's one thing that you definitely need to, to know. It's going to take time. And as a result of that, you may relapse. You may go back into depression until you learn how to walk in this place of authority. So don't beat yourself up because you, you find yourself going back into it. Because a lot of times you have developed a habit now of accepting what the enemy is saying to you um, and justifying it because you look at your life, you look at situations, you look at your, your purse, you look at your pocket, you look at your living conditions, you look at your relationships, you look at your career, you look at how you begin to compare yourself to somebody else. And so you begin to feel justified. And so the enemy will reintroduce those thoughts to you for you to reconnect to gloom. And while you are in the process of coming out of it, there are times that you are going to reconnect. Amen. But once you have begun your emergence, I want to tell you, you are on your way out. The next thing that I want you to know is that you have to accept the fact that you're going to have to work. You got to do some work. Amen. We were talking about that. God's not going to zap you out. But the flip side of that is most of the time you are tired. Amen. So you're going to have to ask the Holy Spirit to strengthen you and to revive your will to live. Amen. Um, when you're coming out of depression, you are going to need strength and it's going to be strength that you can't muster up on your own. Amen. So the Holy Spirit will begin to strengthen your body and revive your will. But you ask him that you have to create, you can create a confession that you say at the beginning of the day. A lot of times the enemy will start as soon as you wake up, he'll drop a negative thought into your mind or you'll feel a certain way and what you have to do is you have to jump on him before he jumps on you so you have to create a confession maybe when you wake up you say this is the day that the Lord has made I will rejoice and be glad in it you may say I don't care what I have to face today God is with me that all things are working together for my good but you have to create a confession another thing that you have to remember um, is that you have to learn how to put a but on the end of your negative comments. See, what happens is when we are depressed, the enemy um, has what I call a hostile takeover of our mouths. After a while, we begin to speak negatively. And so we don't realize that this is one of his tactics to keep us in depression because as you begin to voice the negativity, you 
strengthen his hold on you. Amen. So when you're coming out of depression, you don't just automatically start speaking um, positively. But what you have to do is you have to start by putting a but on it. So you may actually say something like, um, I feel like I'm nothing. But then you need to say, but I'm not my feelings. And God says, I'm royalty. So little by little, you begin to change your conversation. Little by little, you begin to demolish the stronghold that the enemy has or the soul tie, the emotional connection that you have with this gloom. Okay, the next thing, and again, I remind you that these steps are on our page so you can look at them, okay? The next thing, we are on number eight. You begin building up your inner man or your spirit by allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you to do certain things. Now, again, on this list that I have, um, you may be doing all of these things. You may do some of these things. It depends on how God leads you. Amen. You'll just start being inspired to do certain things or God will lead you to speak to somebody and what they say will spark on the inside of you. And you'll be like, oh yeah, I think I better start doing that. But at any rate, God will have a plan for you. And these are some of the things that the Holy Spirit can offer you or lead you into doing. Um, number one, to listen to an audio version of the book of Psalms throughout the day and even at a low volume while sleeping while wearing earplugs. The book of Psalms is known as the deliverance book. I want um, you to remember um, that King David, before he was the king, he was a psalmist for King Saul. King Saul had an evil spirit on him and King David would go and play his harp and probably sing and that evil spirit would come off of him. So the book of Psalms, there are audio versions of it and you can listen to that and that will begin to build your spirit up. Even while you're sleeping, you can put earplugs on and turn the volume down because it's not so much important that you understand every word, but it's important that that power, the power, the dunamis power of the word of God is getting into your spirit. God's word is spirit and it's life. Now, I'm going to tell you the truth. When I was coming out of depression, I could not start with the word of God. I had to start with instrumental praise music because my mind was so convoluted that even when I would hear words that had to do with God, um, the enemy would flip them in my mind. So I may hear a song that says, or a scripture that says, God really loves you. In my mind, the enemy would say, but he doesn't love you. You know, look at it's you know, you used to be able to sing this song, but you can't sing it anymore. Look at your life. So while the word of God was coming in, the enemy was unraveling everything that was being said. So you have to, again, be led by the spirit. Maybe you can't listen to the book of Psalms. Maybe you can't listen to the word of God, but you can allow the spirit to lead you to wherever it is you um, can start. Amen. I would get irritated when I would hear something about God. I didn't want to hear the radio. I didn't want to hear anybody praising God. I didn't want to hear anything. I couldn't touch my Bible. I didn't want anything to do with God. That's how far away I was from God through the influence of the enemy. But hallelujah, thank God for deliverance. So wherever you are, but little by little, I did get to a point that I could listen to the book of Psalms. I did get to a point that I could listen to praise music. I, I did get to the point that I could listen to um, 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 preaching again. Amen. But the Holy Spirit just little by little led me to this new place. Amen. The next thing I have here is listen to anointed preaching. If you're able to do so, he may lead you to listen to what we call soaking worship music. Um, God may lead you to go for walks or to sit in the sunlight um, and to memorize encouraging scripture. Amen. He may, um, you may have scripture, um, little, um, you may write out scripture on index cards and sometimes you may not even be able to say it. 
but it can just be there. Amen. And then when you're able to, you can open your mouth and say, it. I remember and I have shared with you that I, I remember that out my uh, mouth was shut closed um, with gloom. I couldn't say anything. But the Holy Spirit, remember now, I've given the Holy Spirit permission to lead me through the um, d- through depression or the emerging. The Holy Spirit swelled up on me, so, inside of me so much, I had to speak out the praise song that I had. And God began to relieve the gloom of depression. So again, that was a part of the... Um, individual plan God had for me. My pastor asked me to lead um, worship. I remember I had come home. I had, I literally had wrappings around my um, wrist where I had tried to slip my wrist and he asked me and I got to tell people, I know God had to tell him to do that because <laughs> I know under normal circumstances, he's looking at me like, what? God had to tell him to give me the microphone and to lead the congregation in worship. And as I did that, there was a healing that was taking place in me, even as God was using me to help his people. So everybody has their own plan. God has his plan for each person. Um, you may be... I'm down. It says here, make adjustments to your diet. The Holy Spirit may show you different foods that you need to give up or different foods you need to introduce to your diet. Attend counseling. You can go to a counselor. Don't don't rule out counseling. Amen. Sometimes it can help you to strategize or to determine determine what doorways um, depression was able to um, travel into you. Um, also. Receive medication. Um, you know, don't rule that out either. Whatever the Holy Spirit is leading for you to do, you do that. I, I had counseling. I had medication. I do want to say this. is If you are currently on medication, I want you to emphatically know that I am not. I am not suggesting that you come off of medication. If you decide that you want to come off of your medication, it's a very serious step. Amen. And I want to let you know that it should be done decently and in order that you need to meet with your physician. You need to meet with your spouse. If you have one, you need to meet with your family members, your support group. And you need the decision. If a decision is made after you have prayed and a decision is made, then you can be weaned off. But everybody is going to know what's going on with you. And then if you struggle, and you need to get back on. It's okay. Amen. Even if they just, you know, begin to lessen your dosage little by little. But um, the things that I'm talking about on this particular page, a Facebook page of Unshackled from Depression, you can use it right along with whatever it is you're already doing. Amen. So even if you end up staying on uh, psychotropic meds for the rest of your life, it's okay. God loves you. God can still use you. You know what I'm saying? So I don't want you to have any shame at all if you happen to be on medication. Go ahead and take that medicine. (laughs) God bless you. I remember for me, it stabilized me. I still got depressed even with depression. I mean, with medicine, you know, the enemy was still saying stuff to me. Okay. But the medicine helped to stabilize me, you know, and I was able to figure out what God, you know, begin to ask God, what is this? And where is this gloom coming from? Amen. So it helps stabilize me. All right. The next thing that the Holy Spirit can, can do, he can, um, he can lead you to create an exercise plan. Or he may um, have you to start um, using those little fragrance um, canisters and to emitting fragrance like lavender in your home that is supposed to um, soothe you. Amen. Or he may have you to drink certain teas, herbal teas to help you. Amen. The Holy Spirit um, may help you or, or lead you to deal with unresolved issues concerning your childhood, traumas, abuse, neglect, and the falsehood of religion. Amen. All those areas can be doorways that make you susceptible to depression. Amen. And so you have to, um, the Holy Spirit will lead you in reference to when it's time for you to deal with those issues. The next thing is, 
The Holy Spirit um, may lead you to admit that you are angry or disappointed with God. To tell God, I'm angry with you. Amen. God's not so fragile that he can cannot handle how you feel about the situation. A lot of us, there are things that have happened to us. We knew God had the ability to help us avoid it. And he allowed it. And we had we have no, you know, we can't imagine, you know, how this could possibly happen. Well, sometimes the Holy Spirit will lead you to just be honest and tell him, hey, I'm really angry. Why did you allow this to happen? You, It's okay for you to ask God questions. You have an intimate relationship with God. Amen. There is this whole religious um, um, saying or thought pattern that you can't speak, you know, ask God questions. But I want to ask what child can't ask their father questions. And I want to know what intimate relationship you can have with someone that doesn't involve questions. Amen. The scripture tells me that Jesus said he not he no longer sees you as a servant, but he sees you as a friend. What friend doesn't talk to their friend and ask them questions? <laughs> I ask God lots of questions. Now, sometimes the answers that I get, they're not what I necessarily want to hear. He may just say, trust me, or I'm a sovereign God, uh, or I got this or whatever the case may be, but he never rebukes me or uh, for a asking him a question. Amen. Glory to God. The scripture says, um, um, talks about how come and let us reason together. Amen. So I don't believe that God wants us um, to be having an a far off relationship with him. I have a very intimate relationship with God. I ask God questions. I tell him how I feel. I tell him how um, I feel about him. I tell him when I'm struggling in reference to the decisions that he's made in my life. I tell, you know, um, I tell him how I'm just going to trust him. We we have a relationship. <laughs> I tell him how desperate I am for him. I tell him how nobody else, there's nobody else that is in this world that I that I love like him. We have a relationship. Amen. He can ask me questions. He in the Bible, he asked his children questions. He even asked um um, um, Adam, who told you that you were, were naked? Amen. In the garden. So God asks questions. It's okay to have a relationship with him, an authentic relationship with him. Um, the Holy Spirit may lead you to re renew your mind about God. A lot of us learned about God when we were kids. You know what I'm saying? And or we learned about God through somebody else's interpretation of God. Amen. And so we have this we have this thought about how God is. But this is a good time for you to begin and say, God, are you really like that? Did you, did you, what did you, what were you really saying when you said that in the word of God? Is that, is that what that really means, God? Are you really telling me this? So this is your opportunity to renew your mind. Who are you? It's to, to, to see who the, he's a God of love, that he's not a God who's angry with you. Then you find out why it is he's not angry with you and how he regards um, Jesus's blood as payment for all of your sins that you have committed, you are committing and will commit. You'll find out that you're justified, that you've been redeemed. So this is, a, it's a time that the Holy Spirit can lead you to renew your mind about who God is. Also on here, I have that you, um, he may lead you to renew your mind about the source of your self-worth and your validation, your acceptance and adjusting how you see yourself. A lot of us see ourselves as failures. Amen. We have to learn how to separate our performance from our position. Amen. A lot of us um, had all of that meshed in. We we live in a performance oriented um, world. And many of us feel that when we fail, that that mean, meant that we were a failure. And failing is a part of life. It happens. But we are not failures. But it takes a while for you to grasp that. Um, it, it takes a while for you to know that God sees you as being very good. The scripture tells me that in Genesis, that when God created um, mankind, he looked back at us and said, mm, that is very good. And that word there in the Hebrew means beautiful. Amen. So God sees you as beautiful. 
<laughs> God sees you as the head and not the tail. God sees you as a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar person to, to show forth the praises of him who brought you out of darkness into his marvelous life. God sees you in a positive way. Amen. And so we have to learn. Amen. We have to learn how to look at ourselves the way that God sees us. Amen. Some of the other things that I have here is that the Holy Spirit may um, re, uh, lead you to re renew your mind about life in a fallen world and how it affects you. See, I was one of those who thought that if I said certain prayers or if I talked to God about a situation, that that meant that I wouldn't have to suffer. Amen. I thought that I could protect myself from all of that until I had to learn, Benita, you're not, this is not heaven. You're going to have to suffer. There are going to be things that are going to happen. You're going to have disappointments, inconveniences, delays. None of this has to do with the fact that God has some kind of personal vendetta. It has to do with the fact that we live in a fallen world. God did not mess up this world. Mankind messed up this world by the choice that they made with Adam and Eve. When they chose to disobey God, they opened us all up to all this mess that we have. God is the one who redeemed us and who's, who's giving us a power and protection through all of this. And who's also going to, um, has prepared a place for us to be eternally with him. Amen. A new heaven and a new earth. Amen. So, um, you know, you have to begin to renew your mind about these things. You know, for a long time, I thought that God was my enemy. I thought that it was a personal vendetta. I felt like, you know, what, you're just piling a bunch of trials and tribulations on me. Obviously, I must be cursed. What's wrong with me? You're just trying to kill me, you know? And so I had to come out of that type of thinking. That type of thinking kept me depressed. Amen. So the Holy Spirit, remember, he's in his bringing you out of depression. He wants you to stay out. Because ultimately, he wants you to learn how to be a good steward over your soul, which is our responsibility. Another thing we may have to renew our mind about trials and tribulations. Just talking about that. Renew our mind about death. Amen. A lot of us think that we can just, because we don't talk about death, because we just act like it's not going to happen. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. And so then we never get ready. <laughs> you know, and yet it's going to happen. You know, I can't talk about mama leaving or whatever the case may be. But the bottom line is either you're going to leave mama or mama's going to leave you. Amen. It's just some things that we have to accept about life. Amen. So the Holy Spirit will help us. But thank God that if we are both saved, it's only a temporary separation. We will see mama again and we will be eternally together. That's the beautiful thing about what God has provided provided for us through Jesus Christ. Amen. Also, I have here, the Holy Spirit may um, require you to face your fears. Okay. He may require you to look at the things that you're afraid about. Um, you may, he may lead you to begin making small goals and learning how to accomplish them. He may lead you to start a hobby. All these types of things may be a part of your journey about coming out. The Holy Spirit may lead you to help people. Sometimes in helping other people, you come out of yourself and that kind of, and that begins to help you to move out of depression. The Holy Spirit um, has all types of things to help you with. Amen. The next thing I have, number six, is that we need to ask the Spirit to make you aware of what you're thinking about. Amen. The Holy Spirit, if you ask him, he will help you to to begin to be more sensitive about what's happening in your mind. I remember a few weeks ago, very recently, that the enemy said to me, he said, I miss, I miss mama. Now he was saying, I miss mama because the enemy uses a first person pronoun. He said, I miss mom because he wanted me to think that I was thinking that, but really I wasn't thinking that. So when I, of course, remember, I've already asked the Holy Spirit to help me to, to think, to think about what I'm thinking about. Um, so it, it just seemed like it was like a, a, a weird type of, thought that came and it stood out to me 
And I was able to say, oh, devil, that's just you. You're trying to draw me into a place of grief. Amen. My mom has passed. So I knew he, his whole aim was to draw me into a place of grief. I get to decide when I go down memory lane. He doesn't decide when I go down memory lane. I don't allow him to manipulate me in reference to going down, excuse me, memory lane. Amen. Because when he does it, his end is gloom. It's not for me to think about her and to have fond memories. Amen. So um, he, God will deal with you in reference to death. All right. And, and, and also about everything that you're thinking about. All right. So it says here next to speak back to the enemy when a thought that does not line up with, when you have a thought that does not line up with the truth according to God's character of love and his word. So you're learning how to speak back. Say no. Uh, uh. I remember one time the enemy told me to cry and God let me know it was another one of those situations. Well, actually, when I first had that experience, I was about to cry. I was getting myself all ready to cry. And then God said, <coughs> Benita, that's not me and that's not you. And I said, oh, my God. I said, Satan, I bind you in the name of Jesus. No, I will not cry. And when I said that, the gloom instantly came off of me and I stopped. No tears came out. And it was over. God began to show me that was all a ploy of the enemy to try to draw you into gloom. Amen. So when you ask God to help you um, think about what you're thinking about, then you're able to speak back to the enemy. When the enemy drops a thought, thoughts are silent words. When he drops a thought or a suggestion in your mind for him, if you re if you don't respond to it, you don't answer, then what he feels is that you're giving him permission to continue to drop negative thoughts in your mind. Amen. All right. So the next step I have here is to cleanse your soul regularly by confessing the existence of negative feelings um, when faced with challenging moments throughout the day instead of repressing or expressing them. Okay, so when we talk about cleansing our soul, we know that our soul um, co um, consists of our mind, our will, and our emotions. Well, if you look at the Word of God, you will find that God want, wanted us to use that part of us as a vehicle of love, um, for of loving Him, and also a vehicle to show people who was living on the inside of us, to show them by our emotions, show them by the choices that we make, show them by um, our meditations that end up being the things we talk about to show them that God was living on the inside of us. But the enemy has tried to hijack that area. And so now we're thinking about him. We're uh, um, receiving negative emotions and then we end up doing negative things. One thing God showed me that in the scripture, it tells me, uh, talks about confession. So let's say that somebody cuts in front of you. And so a lot of times you're like, well, what did you do? You know, and then you say, and then you just kind of go ahead with your life, right? Well, when you don't do anything with that negative um, emotions that you just encountered, there's a residue that stays on the inside of your soul. So you have to confess and so you would say, um, I confess frustration and anger. Father, God, I felt like punching him in his face. These are the types of things that God wants you to say. And then after that, he wants you to thank him for cleansing. Uh, cleansing. The scripture in 1 John said that if we confess um, our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. What sin do we commit? Well, we commit sin if we allow negative emotions to stay in our soul. We commit that sin because God never created our soul to hold, to be a container of negativity. Amen. God already gave us the emotions through his spirit that we're supposed to have in that area. God wants to be loved in that area. Amen. And so when we allow negative emotions to stay there, they develop, they release a residue, which gives the enemy a foothold and makes us more susceptible to depression. So we need to cre create and develop a habit 
of confessing when we feel negativity. If someone makes you angry, you need to say, God, that really made me angry. I'm just so frustrated. God wants you to get that out. And then saying, God, I thank you for cleansing me. God, my, my soul was not created to hold negativity, Lord. So I thank you for cleansing me and restoring my soul to its original um, position and in order for it to function in its original intent. The next thing that we have here is to take steps to forgive yourself and others by discovering how it benefits you to do so. Um, the, uh, forgiveness is one of those real sticky um, subjects. A lot of people preach forgiveness. A lot of people teach forgiveness. A lot of people will even make you feel bad or try to make you feel bad if you don't forgive. Because forgiveness is very, very important. Amen. It is It is imperative that you forgive but sometimes you have been through so much trauma you have been through so much hurt you have been through so much that you just can't forgive you're stuck at a place where you just cannot forgive you can't release the situation amen and so what I want to let you know is that I understand that that's the first thing. I, I God allowed me to write a book about this because I went through a situation where I just could not. I was literally paralyzed from the pain and the hurt of it. I could not forgive. I just was stuck in it. And so what God had to show me it took a long time. But what God had to show me was that it was hurting me to hold on to it. Amen. And so even with him showing me that I still just could not move. And so the first thing I had to do is say, well, listen, God, help me to want to forgive. That was my first step because I didn't want to forgive. I wanted to hold on to it because for me, that was kind of my way of getting back at the person. So I had to say, God, help me to want to forgive. And then after God, he softened my heart and he didn't, he didn't bash me. He didn't make me feel bad. I just went ahead with my life. And one day I was in worship. I was worshiping him. My heart was getting softer. And so um, he he allowed me, I began to turn toward forgiveness. And then I began to do some research and find out the scripture talks about that in an in instance, um, God says, for my own sake, I forgive your transgressions. So God was telling me, Benita, I understand how you feel. I understand it be, how it is to be hurt and disrespected and disregarded. But you better look out for you. So as he was teaching me about this, the next thing that I said to God is, well, you know, I want to forgive, but I can't. <laughs> so now I forgive by faith. And that was my next step. So I went from, I, I helped me to want to forgive, to uh, forgive by faith. And then eventually <laughs> I was able to release the person. Amen. And to release the situation to God for him to deal with the, the situation. Amen. But it was a process. And so a lot of individuals who struggle with depression, there's unforgiveness there. And again, I'm not going to bash you. I'm not going to tell you to get over it, you know, because there's some things, there's some traumatic things that have happened to people. You can't just get over it. But know this. You are holding on to poison and God will allow you to do that if that's what you choose to do. However, he will allow you, he will show you a pathway in order for you to be liberated from that so that you can go on with your life. Amen. And so I want to let you know that forgiveness is possible even for the most traumatic situation. I do understand I believe you me. <laughs> I, yeah, I definitely understand. And I also understand the joy of under, uh, realizing that I looked out for myself. I couldn't look out for the person. I didn't have that kind of love for the person. I'm just going to be honest with you. <laughs> I really didn't. But what I did have was love for me. I know I wanted to get better. Amen. And so that's what motivated me to forgive. Amen. The uh, next thing is that you need to see yourself Using your experience and testimony to help someone else to emerge. Look, make this thing right here you're going through work for you. Make it work for you. I'm in, I'm in still amazed that God is using me to help people because honestly, I didn't think I was going to come out of depression. I didn't, I didn't plan on coming out of depression. I planned on killing myself. I planned on dying. That was my plan. Amen. But when God began to show me, no, <laughs> you're not in control. 
And no, I'm not finished using you. When I finally accepted that, that's when I turned toward coming out of depression. Amen. And so then I said, shoot, let me make this thing work for me. You know, and I started seeing myself, yeah, I'm going to help people because, you know, I felt like there were a lot of people who didn't know how to talk to people who were depressed. There were people, as, as I was dealing with other church people and, you know, people in leadership to me, I was like, they don't know, not, they don't know how to deal with me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so um, I said to myself, I'm going to be an advocate for other people who are struggling with depression. I'm going to be a coach for other people who are, are struggling with depression. But most importantly, I'm a finger <laughs> to show people the way to um, establish a partnership with the depression cure. Amen. Who is God? Amen. So I want you to begin to see yourself as being a part of the army to help people come out of depression. As you come out, you can start journaling the things that you're going through, the feelings that you're having. Amen. Because it helps you to be more empathetic to people because you understand they can really talk to you. I can't tell you how many people even on this on, on this um, group, they're able to open up to me because they read my testimony or they hear my testimony. And so they say, OK, I can trust her with how I feel because she understands. And so then that gives me an opportunity to begin to massage their hearts and begin to um, share um, revelation and strategies with them to come out of depression. But it's no way they would have allowed me to do that if they didn't believe that I understood. How did I understand is that I went through it. So make this. Allow God to turn your misery into a ministry. <laughs> Okay, and I think lastly, yes, know that the emergence from depression does not mean that the enemy will not make negative suggestions anymore, but you will be equipped to refute them, um, which will prevent you from spiraling into depression. So you got to realize that in, uh, for the rest of our lives, as long as we live on this earth, our soul, just like our body, can be influenced and attacked by the enemy. However, when we begin to take better care of our soul, the enemy does not have that kind of power. And believe you me, he'd much rather um, try to depress somebody who's not, who has no idea about how to take care of their soul. Amen. So you will be depressed a lot less. I'm depressed a lot less or I struggle with it a lot less. Amen. I can't say that the enemy doesn't try to take me into depression. I can't say that as I was coming out of depression and I learned these things, I can't say that I didn't fall back into it. But I'm going to tell you now I am now I am depression free. I do not get depressed. Does that mean I can't get depressed? No, that doesn't mean that at all. Amen. It doesn't mean that. I can't say that. But what I can say is that God has taught me strategies that I use and I know how to back the devil up off me. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I know how to back him up. Amen. And so I used to I used to stay in a perpetual state of depression. All just depressed all the time. Depressed and doing every holiday. Depressed every day. And then as I began to use the strategies that God was sharing with me, it got less and less and less. And now, honestly, I don't get depressed or I fight it before it can seep down into me. Amen. So again, I'll always, everyone is susceptible to anybody can be depressed. You could not be depressed for, for 20 years and then get depressed. Amen. Because that area is open to the enemy. However, as I said again, if you learn these strategies and you use them, you will begin to be depressed a lot less. And you'll be able to have the authority in your soul area to keep the enemy from pulling you down into a spiral of depression. Well, God bless you. Thank you so much. I pray that you were helped. <laughs> I pray that something touched your heart today. And know that this particular teaching, I am going to upload it um, into our um, on our YouTube channel. So you can always go there. And I want to invite you to subscribe at our YouTube channel, our YouTube 
channel is Unshackled from Depression. Um, you can subscribe, and that and what will happen is is when I begin to take um, upload lessons, they'll notify you. You can go, and then you can go up there anytime you want. Amen. And look look at the uh, teachings, the poetry, sing the songs. It's just a good place to go, and a good place to recommend to other people to go, so that they too can be made whole. Amen. God bless you so much. Mm, love and kisses to you. Bye-bye.